Processing is an incredibly versatile tool. To get a feeling for the range of what you can do, in this video we'll run through a bunch of little programs that I've written, each of which demonstrates a different quality of processing. I've deliberately chosen simple programs that generally took less than a half an hour from inspiration to running program, though a few took a couple of hours. These are all programs that you will be able to write by the end of the course. I really love little geometric things that are simple, but create interesting patterns. This is just a little thing that I knocked out in about 15 or 20 minutes. The core of it is the idea. And once you have the idea and you have some processing chops, you can write this program in no time. This little animation will run forever, the wheels spinning without end. Since it's a program, we can change everything about it. The colors, the speed, the number of circles that are moving, everything about it can be changed. I played with all of those qualities until I honed in on this particular combination, which for me captures the essence of my original inspiration. This is a little interactive piece that follows my mouse. It's very simple. The program is just a few lines long, but it's lots of fun to play around with. As I move my mouse, I change the nature of the pattern. I can get some really wild visual effects, from slow and graceful to fast and eye-popping. Because it's a program, you can change everything about this, from the colors to the rendering style to the speed to everything about the visuals. The fact that this is interactive and is responding to me as I move the mouse makes it even more fun. Here's a program that draws a bunch of moving disks. They're changing size and they're moving over time. It's all happening randomly. I can't tell you what this thing is going to draw next. Every time I run the program, I get a different animation. But these results aren't entirely random because I've chosen the ranges for my random numbers and I've specified how they combine so that they generate the kind of images that I like. But the precise result, well, I don't know what that's going to be, and that's part of the fun. This program will run forever. The little disks will just keep accumulating, drawing over and over each other, generating an ever-changing pattern of colors and shapes as long as you let the program run. And if you run the program again, you'll get a different pattern. Processing is very good at handling type. You can control typography just like any other graphic element, like circles or squares or rectangles. You can change the color or size of your letters, and you can move them around or even rotate them. Here, I'm just bouncing some letters around randomly to show you that the letters still look nice and sharp even as they move around. I've written a bunch of iPhone games. As much as I enjoy writing programs using Apple's programming tools, it's even quicker to write them in processing. I often start working on a new game by making a bare bones version in processing. Then I can play around with its rules and graphics, change the rules, and experiment with it very quickly and easily, keeping it very simple so I'm just working with the essence of the idea until I get the game running the way I like. In this simple little prototype, you can see that I'm pretending that I can rotate the phone because I thought I'd let these squares fall down the screen as though pulled by gravity. Almost every low-budget submarine movie or airplane disaster movie has at least one shot of people staring intently at radar screens. I thought it would be fun to come up with a kind of simplified, abstract impression of a radar screen, so I wrote this. It does the trick for me and feels like a low-budget radar. You can change the number of circles or lines. You can change the speed of the rotating sweep or the number of blips. Here's a program that responds to the keyboard. Every time I type a letter, it shows up at the top of the screen in a random color at a random place, and then it falls. So I'll type a capital G, and you can see that it shows up and it comes down with a little bit of wiggle. If I type blueberries, the letters show up, but each letter appears in a random place. I can type cherry pie and an exclamation point at the end. You can type in any letters, any numbers, weird typographical characters, and they all appear and fall down the screen. Of course, this is all running in real time, so if you don't like the way the letters fall, or you wish that they showed up left to right so you could actually read the words, you could easily do that. I like the kind of random motion that I have here. 
there's recently been a resurgence in a style of art direction where you have a bunch of layers in an image that are all moving and casting shadows on one another. It looks like a stack of cutouts, giving you this nice kind of cartoonish 3D layered effect. I thought it would be fun to simulate the waves for an ocean scene for a puppet show. These waves are random. Every time you run the program, you get a different set of waves. But the way they're moving isn't random, and I wrote this program to move the waves as though you really had a little crank off stage, and you were moving the waves by hand cranking the mechanism. You'll notice that the waves up front are moving by a larger amount and faster than the waves in back, which are moving by a smaller amount and more slowly to simulate perspective. If you wanted to make a real puppet show, you could model it this way, and then play with the shapes and the motion until everything looks just the way you want. One day I thought it would be fun to design a sign for a bar that catered to spaceship pilots. So the sign should have some classic looking spaceships on it. So with paper and pencil I drew a little rocket ship, and then I told the computer how to draw the rocket using a bunch of smooth curves. I also gave it curves for the shapes of the two planets. Then I thought about how I wanted this neon sign to look. I played with it for a while until I got this look. Now that I have the program written, if I want to draw anything else out of neon, I can reuse this bit of processing and draw any shapes I want. Processing can also be used for mathematics. Here's a piece of geometry that I wanted to understand better. The two reddish dots and the two bluish dots have a very specific relationship to one another. The yellow dot has a specific relation to the big blue and red dots. I wanted to understand these relationships. Now I had the equations in front of me and I understood the equations, but I wanted to really get it. I wanted to feel how these things related to one another. So I wrote a program to let me move all of these things around with the mouse in real time. And it really helped me understand the relationship of these geometric objects and build up my intuition. After I played with this for a while, I was able to go back to the mathematics and look at the equations again with a deeper insight into how the pieces related to one another and how changing any one of them changed the others as well. I think lava lamps are really cool. I thought it would be fun to make a lava lamp on the computer. So I sat down and thought, what would make a really nice, simplified version of a lava lamp? I dreamed up some ideas to capture visually how the wax would change and grow as it moved, and after some pleasant experimenting, I ended up with this program. This is also controlled with random numbers. I can't tell you exactly what the program is going to do next, but I do know generally what it will do, and it will run forever as new blobs rise up and glop together and ooze apart. Even this simple lamp won't repeat itself. It'll just create these new gloppy patterns of wax as long as we let it run. And if we run the program over again, we'll get new gloppy patterns. But they will always be like this, because this is the kind of feeling I was going for, and I tuned the program until it felt just right to me. I thought it could be fun to draw postcards from a boat sitting in the middle of a lake looking at a nighttime skyline of a city. So I wrote a program that generates a different postcard every time you run it. Like some of the other examples, much of this is random, although it's not totally random. There's a lot of design here with randomness happening within a structure that I created. So every time you run the program, you get a different sky with different stars, you get different buildings with different shapes and different patterns of windows, the windows are lit up with different colored lights, and there are different lights down on the docks reflected in the water. All of these things and more change with every postcard, but of course, they're all of a type, they're all of a family. I really enjoy this process of creating families of images. I can't tell you exactly what each image is going to look like, and that gives it all an element of surprise. Here's another program that generates images that are controlled with random numbers. In this case, the numbers change over time, so the picture changes over time too. I can't tell you exactly what this program will draw when I start it, and I can't tell you how the picture will evolve. But this picture will change and grow forever. 
It will keep running as long as the computer remains turned on and the program is running, and it will be generating new patterns. I really like this idea of letting the composition evolve, because every now and then you'll spot something that's really appealing, and that you might not have thought of yourself. You can take that and go somewhere with it in a different piece of work, or you can just enjoy it here. This is the very same program. I just jumped ahead a little while. It's the very same run. I just cut out a big segment of time. So you can see that the program is evolving the pattern and changing it. And here we are later still. This will just go on forever. And it's a lovely kind of screensaver meditative thing. And if there's anything about this that doesn't tickle your sense of aesthetics, from any detail to the big overall picture, well, it's a program. You can go in and change anything you want to make it work just the way you want. That concludes our super quick tour. I've only touched the surface of the wide variety of things you can do. Surf the web and discover the amazing things that people are doing with this new expressive medium of graphics programming. Then come on back and we'll start building up your own shops so you can design and create your own work.